let's take a few minutes to discuss character encoding in .NET applications. In .NET, strings are logically a sequence of 16-bit values, each of which is an instance of the char struct. The length of a string indicates how many characters it contains. Encoding describes how these characters are mapped to bytes of binary data, stored in memory, on disk, or transmitted over a network. Throughout the history of computing, several common encoding standards have been developed, which remain in use today. An early encoding format that you may be familiar with is the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, or ASCII for short. Initially developed in 1960, this is an early encoding standard with its origins based on the encoding used to send messages via telegraph. ASCII encoding uses seven bits to encode 128 characters from the English alphabet, including lowercase and uppercase letters, punctuation, and digits. It includes additional non-printing control characters, such as tab and carriage return. One of the significant limitations of ASCII is that its 7-bit design means it cannot represent non-English characters. ASCII is still in use today, and it's specified as the encoding for the HTTP1 request line and headers. Unicode dates to 1987 and uses a 16-bit character model to address the need for reliable worldwide text encoding. The original proposal was intended to be sufficient for encoding every language, but it had some limitations. In 1996, the specification was updated and version 2.0 removed the 16-bit limit through a mechanism known as surrogate pairs. This allowed historical scripts and many rarely used characters to be encoded. Unicode continues to evolve with new versions adding support for characters from additional languages, and in more recent years, the frequently used emoji characters. The Unicode Consortium maintains Unicode and as of version 13, the Unicode standard contains 143,859 characters, although this standard defines over 1 million possible code points. A code point is an integer value ranging from 0 through to 1,114,111. Code points are assigned to letters, symbols, emojis, and control characters. Many available code points are not yet assigned and are reserved for future use. Here are a few examples of Unicode code points. Code point 13, 0000D in hex decimal, is a non-printing control character representing a carriage return. Code point 65 is the Latin capital letter A. Code point 1590, represents this Arabic letter. Code point 128,512 represents the grinning face emoji. Within the Unicode code points, there are two subranges. The basic multilingual plane, BMP, includes code points from 0 to 65,536. These are representable with a single 16-bit value. The BMP range is sufficient to cover most of the world's writing systems. Supplementary planes provide support for more than a million additional code points. The supplementary code points support characters from less common and ancient scripts as well as the emoji characters. A Unicode transformation format is a character encoding format that encodes all possible character code points of Unicode. Various formats exist which use different techniques to represent the Unicode code points. In .NET, strings use UTF-16 encoding for the characters. UTF-16 requires a minimum of two bytes for each character, even for the basic English letters from the Latin alphabet. Higher code points, such as those used for emojis, may require a second .NET char instance to be able to represent them fully. This pair of characters is known as a surrogate pair. As we now use two char instances, representing such code points requires four bytes of memory. 
UTF-16 is not the only Unicode transformation format in use today. In fact, it's not even the most common. The internet powers today's world, and UTF-8 is the most prevalent encoding on the internet. With most sites accepting request bodies encoded as UTF-8 data, and returning UTF-8 encoded responses. UTF-8 is a variable width character encoding, capable of encoding all code points from Unicode. The length of each UTF-8 encoded code point varies between 1 and 4 bytes. One byte is sufficient to represent the characters from US ASCII. An additional 1920 characters can be encoded when using two bytes, which supports the remaining Latin script alphabets and many others. Three bytes are needed to store the rest of the characters from the basic multilingual plane of Unicode, and four bytes are used when representing code points in the supplementary plane, such as historical scripts and the emoji characters. UTF-8 is popular for the web because it can require fewer bytes to transmit each character. Assuming a site's content is primarily English text and symbols, these can be encoded using a single byte. .NET includes many encoding classes to handle different encoding schemes and to convert between encodings. These classes derive from an abstract base encoding class in the system.txt namespace. We may access the different encoding classes from static properties on the encoding base class, such as ASCII or UTF-8. These classes may then be used to encode chars or strings to the correct byte representation. They can also decode back from bytes to the char or string representation. Let's focus on a short example of the encoding APIs in .NET. We can start with a regular string literal. C sharp string literals are UTF-16 encoded and support the inclusion of higher Unicode code point characters, such as the treble clef at the end of this string. If we check the length of this string, we'll learn that it contains 15 characters. But if we manually count these characters, we'd actually get a count of 14. So why do we have this discrepancy? The treble clef is an example of a surrogate pair, which requires two chars to represent the element. The length of the string is the count of the number of chars, not the individual text elements. When we convert this to UTF-16 bytes using the encoding.unicode.getBytes method and check the length, we get 30 as the result. Each c -sharp char requires two bytes to encode using UTF-16 encoding. If we repeat the encoding process but using UTF-8 encoding, we can compare the byte length. Using UTF-8, the number of bytes required is 17. The ASCII compatible characters only require one byte each in this variable length encoding. This is a good example of why UTF-8 is generally preferred as the encoding format for the internet. When the text is mostly ASCII compatible characters, the byte count is generally going to be lower than other encoding formats. This code converts back to a string from the UTF-8 bytes using the getString method. We can compare the original and round-tripped strings and confirm they are indeed equal. Before we move on, let's quickly review why the length of strings can be misunderstood. This emoji represents a woman with medium skin tone and curly hair. It appears as a single element, but is actually an example of something called a grapheme cluster. A grapheme cluster is a sequence of one or more Unicode code points that should be treated as a single element. This emoji is a combination of four code points that describe its final characteristics. If we include this element in a string, we can observe the length more closely. Note that this code will work if you copy it into Visual Studio, but Visual Studio may not render the character as a single element in the editor. The length of this string is seven, even though it represents a single text element. Three of the constituent parts require two chars each, and the zero width joiner requires one. If we access the UTF-16 bytes and check their length, we observe that it requires 14 bytes, two per char. To count the actual number of text elements, we need to construct a string info object 
from the system.globalization namespace. We can access the length in text elements property, which correctly returns a length of one. For most line of business applications, such nuances are generally not significant. However, it is crucial to understand the mechanics involved here if your code evaluates text length where non-ASCII characters may be included.